everyone. Uh, so we're going to talk about Punnett squares in this video. Punnett squares are based off of Mendelian inheritance. Uh, Mendelian inheritance is based off of this dude who went into his garden, found some inconsistencies with peas, and was trying to breed basically the best brand of peas. So as humans, we are expressing, in almost every case, one of two different genes. We either express the dominant gene or we express the recessive gene. Um, and we could see that across the human population. So one of the really common examples that's always pulled up is your hairline. You can see my hairline is terrible, that my forehead goes back forever. Um, that is what happens when you get old and stressed and have a receding hairline. Uh, but what you can see is that I have a very distinct V in my hairline here. Oh, that hairline's terrible. Okay, so you have, I have a very distinct V, so I would have uh, what's called a widow's peak. Now, a widow's peak is the homozygous recessive gene. And so when we look at genes, we are gonna look at the couple different categories. We're either gonna have the dominant genes, the dominant genes, or we'll have the recessive genes. If, if we have the dominant genes, there's a couple things that we could have. Usually what we do is we represent dominant by capital letters. And we represent recessive by lowercase letters. And so in order for the recessive gene to be expressed, what we would need is we would need uh, two lowercase letters. So if we were doing widow's peak, I'm going to choose a nice letter that's very easy to determine that we have a lowercase. I'm going to do H for hair. So we would need something like this. And the reason that we write two different letters is to remember we're getting information from both our mom and from our dad as well, where you have two pieces of information coming together to create you. And so that would be the recessive gene. The dominant gene would be expressed with two capital letters. However, there is a third case as well where you are known as a carrier. And so if you're a carrier, you will be expressing the dominant gene so you will express the dominant gene, but you will also carry the recessive gene with you. So let's say recessive is the widow's peak and dominant is the flat hairline, the flat hairline. If you had the capital H, capital H, or capital H, lower H, you would have, or you would express, um, it's called a phenotype, phenotype, is what you express. That's what we can actually see. And then all of these things up here are called the genotype. So genetically, this is what you are expressing. And so what we would see then is the genotype are, you have three different options, capital H, capital H, lower H, lower H, capital H, lower H. Phenotypically, so what you actually see on human beings is you will either see a flat hairline or a widow's peak. But that flat hairline has two potential options. And so when we do Punnett squares, what we're looking at is we want to say, okay, mom has this, dad has this. What are the percentages of a certain hairline that the child will have? So let's say that we have my dad. My dad has a very strong widow's peak. He has exactly my hairline. So we'll say that this is my dad. And let's say that he crosses or makes a baby with my mother. This is how I was produced. And let's say that mom, let's make mom a carrier. So my mom has a flat hairline, but she also is carrying the gene or carrying the potential of me having, of me having a widow's peak. And so what we do is we'll put the dad's two letters up along the top. So my dad's letters will go H and H like this. Okay. And then my mom, what we'll do is we'll put her here over on the left. And the way that we do these is we then look at these and do what's called crosses. And so we say in this top left box here, we'll have a lowercase h and a capital H. And usually when we're doing these, the nomenclature is to always write the capital letter first. So we'd have capital H, lowercase h. In the bottom left, lowercase, lowercase. We'd have capital H, lowercase h lowercase h, lowercase h. And what we can see from this table here then is that we have four options. But realistically, we only have two options because they're the same. Okay, so there's four boxes we filled in, but the top two are the same and the bottom two are the same. And what we can say then is that two out of the four options will be lowercase h, lowercase h, or will be widow's peak, called out WP. So what that means is that 50 there's a 50% chance that me as a baby or me as an adult will get a widow's peak. 
What we can also see then is that two out of the four options were capital H, lowercase h. And so that would be a flat hairline with a 50% chance of me getting that. What we could see then though, is that I still would be a carrier of that widow's peak gene. And what's interesting is if you look at my brother, my brother has a flat hairline and I have a widow's peak. Now 50% doesn't mean that one child will have a widow's peak and one child will have a flat hairline. Instead, what it means is there's a 50% chance of either event happening. It's like flipping a coin. If you flip a coin three times, you might get three tails in a row. You might get tails, tails, tails. But if you were to do a million different tests, you'd see that roughly you'd get 50% tails, 50% heads. It's just that that three coin flip sample size is very, very small. So the fact that I got a very strong widow speak and my brother got a flat hairline, that was just by chance. Both of us could have gotten a really strong widow's peak or both of us could have gotten really flat hairlines. Um, but as you can see from this terrible hairline, this receding stressed out hairline, I definitely got a widow's peak. Um, and so that's how Punnett squares work is that you take the mom and the dad and you do what's called crosses. And once you get those crosses, you take the results that you get and you um, will give a percentage of how likely it is that one of those results will occur. It won't always be 50-50 and there are some cases where we have multiple different options that are present. But this is just one quick example of Punnett squares, an intro to how to do them. Hope that made sense, hope you enjoyed, peace.